a little less than four and a half hours from post time for the 148th running of the Preakness and happy to be joined by NBC's lead voice of NBC Sports, Mike Tarico. Great to see you again, Mike. It is good to be back. I was busy this afternoon, busier than I had planned, so I haven't had a chance to change yet. So, a little no, peek behind the curtain here. That's all good. Yeah, this is a wardrobe pregame show. We'll get to the actual wardrobe. It's good to see you. Good to be here. Great to be back in Baltimore as well. And it is. And unfortunately, the story that is you can't seem to escape right now and certainly major triple crown horse racing, another horse put down, and it's one of Bob Baffert's horses. Just as we watch this continue on after the Derby and the leading up to the Kentucky Derby, or Churchill Downs rather, what's your sense of the overall state now of, of horse racing? It's a threefold conversation. There have been horse fatalities over the years. It's become something that is a part of the sport that is accepted, not willingly, but it's understood as part of the sport by the people who are involved in the industry. For the majority of the fans who watch on these big weekends outside of the industry, they can't understand why it happens and the tolerance is much, much, much lower. That's not to say it doesn't hurt. When uh, this unfortunate incident happened in the sixth race today, I happened to be back here by the barns and I watched Bob and Jill Baffert come back and they were in tears. They were emotional. The people who train and own these horses care about them so much. Uh, is there an answer? No. Is it better than it was? Yes. but. At this time where there's other legalized forms of sports gambling out there, horse racing no longer has that domain to itself. Uh, there's going to be more scrutiny, more questions from people outside the sport, while the people inside the sport, although they are used to it, come to understand that those outside are asking uh, louder and louder questions every time something happens. And last point, on a big stage too, Derby weekend, Preakness undercard, when it happens during the biggest days, it makes the biggest headlines. Right, that's when you know, you would likely see maybe Congress get further involved. And then, of course, we have a governing body that is going to start taking control of the, yeah. the way that the safety and you know, the regulations for the, what we've seen for the horses you know, starting after, you know, a couple days here after we run the Preakness today. You know, what kind of teeth that governing body has will remain to be seen. If, it, if it's powerful and strong, it will certainly lend the credibility back to the industry. Yeah, uh, it'll formalize things. Right now, the way I try to describe it to somebody who doesn't follow as closely as maybe the people back here do, is that it's a jigsaw puzzle and each piece has different requirements. So the rules in Kentucky are different from the rules here, are different from the rules in New York, different from the rules in California. This will have a uniformity to the rules, so that will help. Part two that will help is that we'll have electronic records of all the horses. So the notes that one vet's taking are seen by another. So in general, will it help? Yes, although your first blush might be more government control is not good for any <laughs> industry, help, right? right? Uh, but this will be standardizing. The question becomes, how can you ever get to the point where we can't talk to the horses? We can't say, are you feeling okay? Does this hurt? They do more diagnostics than ever before. They're going to have to continue to increase that. Here's the bottom line. The industry needs to be trusted by the fans for the fans to continue to support and try to continue to grow the sport. So they have to do everything they can to continue to build that. If you want to keep it a niche sport with the people who like it only, that's fine, but that doesn't work in any business model going forward. I think you continue to need to try to find ways to grow the sport. One of them is transparency and helping people understand that we're doing everything we can as an industry to make sure the horses are as safe as possible.